Not everyone is being dumb about going green. While many places are adding tons of solar and wind power without enough inertia, aka energy storage, a small number of regions and even whole countries are actually getting it right. China has been praised for adding so much solar and wind power, but at the same time criticized for opening new coal-fired power plants. Western analysts and policy pushers from fancy universities say things like, oh, that's because of China's evil coal lobby and blah blah blah. But the reality is that China is being super smart about how they go green. Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, the Tribble. So the first thing you're thinking is, oh China, they put back doors on our solar inverters. I wonder why you're saying that. Um, I have a few things to say about that point. The first is that uh, I used to work for a company that made the equipment that's the optical transport switches that forms the backbone of the modern internet. And by law, we were required to put back doors in that equipment. Now I know it's just, yeah, but those are legal back doors and it requires a court order to access it and blah, blah, blah. Um, we also happen to have intelligence agencies and there are probably a few news stories you've read in the past 5, 10, 15 years about how, right, we put back doors in everything we design and build. Uh, our intel agencies, if there are no back doors, they insert back doors in that equipment. So. As far as the Chinese solar inverters go, um, yeah, they found apparently some cellular modems in certain solar inverters. Uh, one of the reasons that might be the case is because solar inverters require software updates. But of course, we want China's solar inverters because they're the largest manufacturer of solar inverters. So we want solar panels, therefore we need solar inverters, therefore we buy them from China. But they require software updates on a regular basis. But we don't want the software to update because they come from China. Wait, so we buy their equipment because we need it and because it's good, but then we don't want to allow them to update in case they're doing something evil. Right. You also have to consider the fact that we don't need China to collapse our power grid or any of our other modern infrastructure for us. For example, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, in the good old United States of America, a couple days ago they came out and they said, hmm, yeah, we need to upgrade like over one third of our air traffic control systems across the United States because many of those systems are still using floppy disks and Windows 95. This is the year 2025 in the United States of America and they're using air traffic control systems with floppy disks and Windows 95. You know, another thing you might want to consider is that story about the Chinese hackable solar inverters. That came out at a specific time and it served as quite a nice distraction. So what was it a distraction from? Hmm, I'll let you look that one up on your own. In any case, China's solar grid is big. Very, very big. It is 2.2 times larger than the number two biggest electrical grid in the world which happens to belong to the United States. China is upgrading their giant power grid slowly but surely. And while they do that, they're adding more and more green energy. In fact, China accounts for one third of the world's entire solar panel installations. China also happens to be the world's largest producer of wind turbines and solar panels. They're a giant country, they have a giant power grid, they need all that power to do things like manufacture everything that's made in China and of course everything is made in China because our company said no we want cheap labor so we shipped all our manufacturing over there they manufacture everything they ship it back to us and we pay less money for it and we're all happy we created that situation and of course they're kind of the biggest manufacturer in the world right so if they need a lot of solar panels and wind turbines they'll just build them themselves and sell them to all the other countries too of course What's more, in 2022, China installed more solar than the rest of the world combined. In 2023, they doubled their installed solar again, increased wind power by 66%, and they quadrupled their energy storage systems. Oh, imagine that! Energy storage, like battery, you mean like inertia for a green grid. What a great idea! 
But despite their giant grid and their massive installations of solar and wind, the Chinese grid is still only 33% renewable. Why? Well, because the Chinese know what's up with inertia. China is also using many, many more battery storage systems compared to other countries. China has over 30,000 megawatts of battery storage systems to add inertia to their grid. 30,000 megawatts. In comparison, Spain has 60 megawatts. 30,000... 60. Okay. China also had a hydropower station go offline due to a drought in the, a few years ago. So yeah, so much for green hydropower saving the day. And by the way, the next time you hear some news story about like, oh, evil China and their evil polluting ways, uh, consider two important points. The first point is that yes, they are adding coal-fired power plants. These are modern coal-fired power plants, not a polluting coal-fired power plant from 1970. They are fossil fuel power plants, and the reason they're adding new ones, I'm sure the coal lobby has something to do with it, but the reason they're adding more fossil fuel generation is because they're doing the transition to green slowly and carefully, and they want that good old-fashioned traditional mechanical inertia that coal-fired power plants provide. They have a lot of coal, they don't want to go full green too fast. Bob's your uncle, right? It makes sense. The second thing to remember is that uh, it was only in 2006 that China became the most polluting country on Earth in terms of, like, CO2 emissions or whatever. So in 2005, who was the most polluting country on Earth? Why, it was the United States of America, of all places. So when we pollute, that's perfectly fine. But when they pollute, they're evil and bad. In any case, China's push for a bigger and better grid began way back in 2005 when they had a series of brownouts and blackouts. So they started installing UHV, ultra-high voltage power lines, that run at between 800,000 and 1.1 million volts. So what's the deal with UHV power lines? Well, as I mentioned in my previous video, one of the issues with green energy is that you need to get a whole lot of power from the sunny, windy area to where you need to actually use it, like for industry and population centers. So China was having grid problems before they even started green energy, so what they did is they installed the world's largest network of ultra-high voltage power lines. The voltage is super, super high, so you can keep the wires relatively thin, a smaller amount of current, a higher amount of voltage, power equals voltage times current, boom! You can transfer tons and tons of power from point A to point B. They did that to support their manufacturing industry. Then a few years later, they decided to go green. And as they added more green energy, more solar and wind, for example, uh, they added even more UHV lines to get that green power again from point A to point B. In fact, by the end of 2025, China is supposed to have over 75,000 kilometers of UHV power lines. That's a whole lot more than pretty much any other country out there. What's more, China is actually helping other countries, such as Brazil, to install their own UHV lines, to beef up their own grids, and help support them in their own transitions to green energy. So China has their traditional mechanical inertia, adding more coal-fired power plants. They have the new type of inertia in the form of battery storage systems, for example. Half of the entire world's installed battery storage base. Uh, they have a massive ultra-high voltage grid to get all the power where it needs to be, green or not, and they're doing their rollout slowly but surely, slowly and carefully to maximize stability while also maximizing the amount of green energy that they produce and use. So yeah, from where I'm sitting, uh, when it comes to green energy, China is pretty much crushing the rest of the world. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.